We'd, we will recognize Mr. Himes for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, I was moved by Congressman Scott's comments and I uh, want to associate myself with those comments. I honestly don't know whether disclosure is going to fundamentally alter compensation in this country, but I know that in addition to the uh, economic challenges that the disparity creates, there is a perception of fairness issue that is terribly important. And uh, in the presence of members of the industry, I've been in those meetings where compensation is determined always with an eye to comparability, comparable pay. I would suggest that we got to start going to fairness or we'll be in a lot of trouble. Um, Mr. Silvers, 1105, um, you, you talked about the leverage limitation, the 2x leverage limitation. You said this limitation was clearly drafted in bad faith. Mr. Silvers, I drafted that limitation. Um, and I object on two counts. One, I see what happens to this institution when we challenge each other's good faith or thereof, and I also see what happens when we get to each other's motivations. But more importantly, I drafted this leverage limitation because of a criticism that you raised two years ago when you came before this committee and said these are large leveraged pools of capital. Now in discussion, we ultimately determined that they are not large leveraged pools of capital, that in fact they create leverage at the industrial company level that they purchase. But I thought, gosh, you know, a lot of people out there think that they are large leverage pool of capital and perhaps we ought to address that by saying that if they were to become such, we should put a limitation on them. Mr. Silver, since you got this personal, I would point out that I have about a 95% AFL-CIO voting record, so I suspect that we can philosophically find agreement on many issues. But I do want to pursue this issue now that we've moved the discussion to the sponsored companies, the Burger Kings, the car wash companies that LBO firms, love them or hate them, invest in. I'm wondering whether anybody on the panel can point to a Burger King, and by the way, there have been monumental failures, federated department stores. Can anybody on the panel point to an LBO'd company or an MBO'd company that went down because their banks made unwise decisions or because bondholders made unwise decisions that created systemic risk? A LBO private equity purchase company that got leveraged the way companies do every single day in our economy that went down and created a systemic problem for the United States of America. Okay, that's a lengthy period of silence. So, so I, what, I, Mr. Silver, you a move on to the bond market. And I, I, wanted, I have two questions. You move on to the bond market in your testimony here. And I agree with you, by the way. I suspect that there may be a bubble developing in the high yield market. But I'm puzzled by using that as an argument against a bill which simply attempts to take the smaller private equity firms, unleveraged by definition because of that limitation that I put in, and not have them sending reams of data to the SEC that is a burden to them and which we've acknowledged doesn't create systemic risk. How does the existence of 1105 or the non-existence of L 1105 in any way impact the bond market? and in particular the high yield market. If 1105 uh, passes, is the high yield market going to be any different? Congressman. Yes. Your statement ratifies my criticism of your bill because you make clear that you understand that the issue of leverage in the, in the leverage buyout or private equity business is an issue of portfolio leverage and not of firm leverage and that you understood that when you wrote the bill. I, I think that's all there is to be said about this. Well, but there's a great, you and I both know that these entities don't take on system, uh, leverage. Now, by the way, two years ago, you testified that they were highly leveraged pools of capital. No, I disagree with that. So I put in a, well, the record will show it, but, but I, they out take of an on abundance leverage at of the caution, level. I put in that limitation. Now, I was on the high yield market. I have one other question, though. Um, H.R. Oh, this is your testimony, would deny investors in private equity funds, including workers' pension funds, protections in, of, of investing with a registered investment advisor. And I take that very seriously. Um, my understanding is that investors like the AFL-CIO pension funds and others who invest in these funds are accredited and instu institutional investors. That is to say, sophisticated investors. And my understanding further is that they negotiate partnership agreements with these funds in which they say we want this kind of disclosure, we want this, that there is a negotiation in which those accredited and institutional investors receive protections that a retail investor couldn't possibly hope to negotiate with respect to a company they may invest in. So where is the investor protection angle here? Congressman, there are two, the, you rightly point out that there are some pension funds that are large enough in dealing with large uh, leverage buyout firms or hedge funds or, or venture capital firms 
in certain market conditions to effectively negotiate bespoke or customized terms. That is true. Right. Our concern uh, is <coughs> that those funds are not the only funds that are out there. There are many smaller funds, and there, are, and there have been market conditions over the last 15 years in which even large funds had effectively no ability to negotiate fundamental investor protections such as the ones that you cited from my testimony. Right. Registration with the SEC as an investment advisor pr pr provides all of those funds. Right. And as we both know, right, the, the, the limitations on who can invest in uh, a private equity fund, a leveraged buyout fund, a hedge fund, a venture capital fund, those limitations ensure that we're not talking about mom and pop investors anyway. The gentleman's time has expired. Th thank I'll you, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman's time has expired. Uh, the chair now recognizes the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Mulder.